Hey everyone, welcome to another week of KNR 455. This week we are going to begin our two week unit over budgeting. So, this next unit is over a crucial tool that the vast majority of sport organizations rely on for financial planning purposes budgeting. Um, so, we're going to spend this first week defining what a budget is, looking at what it involves. Um, the planning aspects of budgeting, and then um, the process of developing the budget itself. So, um, you know, this week uh, is really going to be introducing this concept of budgeting, um, and then next week we'll continue on um, with that conversation and also start to look at some more practical application when it comes to the budgeting process. Um, this unit is going to set you up for your budgeting assignment later in the semester. This is the budgeting proposal that you're going to be writing as well as the budgeting negotiations that you're going to be participating in with your peers. Um, so just real quick preview of that. So this week, again, we're going to introduce our unit on budgeting and it's going to be more conceptual. Um, and then next week, part two is going to be a little bit more practical in looking at some of the approaches to budgeting and, and how we might manage a budget using a software like Excel. So again, these two units are really put in place to help us um, get ready for your budget negotiation assignment. So next week, I'll introduce a little bit more about the assignment itself. Um, you'll get to read over the assignment and what the expectations are, and we'll also do role assignments, meaning I'll break you out into your groups and we'll decide what role everyone is going to play um, in these budget negotiation sessions. Uh, again, all of this is going to be happening in week 14, so if you want to kind of flag that on your calendar, um, obviously there's going to be a few weeks in between when we finish the budgeting unit and when you actually have to turn in your proposal and come ready to um, negotiate. So you will have some time to work on this outside of class, but I just wanna kind of give you a heads up that this unit is obviously important for a number of reasons, which we'll talk about more this week, um, but it's certainly important in terms of setting you up for your, your really your big project in this class. Okay, so as always, let's start with why. Um, why are we spending two weeks talking about this topic of budgeting? Um, well, as you can imagine, you know, regardless of which um, career path you end up taking in the sport industry, at some point you're probably going to be involved in the budgeting process, right? Whether that's the development of a budget during the planning process or the implementation of a budget during the, the fiscal year, um, whether it's having to make cuts to that budget at some point in your career, as we're seeing many sport practitioners having to do right now um, during COVID. So um, it, I can't think of a topic that we talk about this semester that probably is more relatable than this one to all of your career interests, because I think this is something that not only will you deal with as a practitioner in the sport industry, but also something that we all deal with on a personal level, right? And that's managing our own personal finances and developing a budget and maintaining that budget. So um, I do think there's a lot of practical application to this unit on budgeting. And, and you know, just keep in mind that when we think about budgeting in the sport industry, um, you know, regardless of the sector of industry you work in, all of those organizations are managing a budget, right? And it actually might be, you know, a more important skill set to be able to budget if you're working for, you know, a company that maybe doesn't generate as much revenue versus, you know, one that does. Because then you're going to have to make even more important decisions surrounding that financial planning process. So, uh, you know, we'll look at a number of examples um, throughout the next few weeks in the sport industry. Um, but today our focus is really going to be on defining what a budget is and what the process looks like to develop that budget. All right, so what is a budget? We all have heard the term budget. We all probably have a basic understanding of, of what a budget is, but let's dig a little bit deeper here. So a budget is a financial plan that quantifies planned revenues and expenses for a period of time. Okay, a financial plan 
that quantifies planned revenues and expenses for a period of time. Um, so the big thing that stands out to me here is that first three words, right? A financial plan. A budget is a financial plan, right? You could kind of stop there and explain that to anyone, right? Um, a good budget is a good financial plan, right? A good budget considers a number of factors that we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, but at the end of the day, it's simply a plan or a path forward um, in order to identify planned revenues and expenses for a specific period of time. Now, what are budgets based on? This is a, a key question, and it's going to let us dig a little bit deeper behind this uh, initial cursory definition, right? So budgets are um, you know, based on objectives and goals of an organization, right? Something that they determine based on their mission statement as an organization. So specific objectives and goals that they want to obtain or achieve, um, that's part of the planning process, right? Um, and again, it's also a process. Um, most budgets are going to be proposed at the beginning of a fiscal year and then reevaluated at the end of the year. So it's important, important to keep in mind that um, this is a process and not just something that's done on a Monday and finished on a Friday, right? Um, okay, so what else are budgets based on? We know it's part of this planning process, right? So determining what our goals and objectives are as an organization. Um, and then once we've determined what those goals and objectives are for the upcoming year, whatever the planning process might be or timeline might be, then we get to this forecasting piece, okay? So once we've established those objectives and goals and the specific strategies we want to use to achieve those goals, then we have to actually predict, right? We have to forecast uh, what we think uh, we might actually bring in in terms of revenues and expenses for the year. And that's what forecasting is, right? It's a prediction of the future as it relates to the organization's plan. A forecast relates to events in the environment over which the business has either no control of or only very limited control of. So there are a lot of uh, internal and external factors at stake when it comes to forecasting. And we're going to spend a little bit more time here in a little bit talking about forecasting. And I'm going to show you a few examples, so hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Um, but ultimately, in forecasting, we're trying to make accurate predictions, right? So we've determined what these goals and objectives are uh, for the year, for the planning period. Now we want to make sound predictions um, of what that's actually going to lead to in our budget, right? So again, a forecast is basically a prediction of the future as it relates to the planning process. And once you have reviewed that mission statement, come up with your goals and objectives for the year, and then forecasted what you think those revenues and expenses are actually going to be, then you have your budget. If only it were that simple, right? Um, but this is generally what budgets are based on, right? Um, and this is something that you could probably apply to any sport organization, regardless of size or scope. At the end of the day, they should be making budgeting decisions based on their goals and objectives and then forecasting based on information they have both internally and externally. All right, here's a, a quick example case here that might help us understand this concept of forecasting a little bit more. So practice case here, we have a college athletic department that's planning for its annual gift budget, right? So if we start with the planning process, right, we need to look at what the goals and objectives are. And in this case, their goal is to increase total annual giving. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, more specifically, they need to determine how many new donors they're going to sign up in order to raise X number of dollars, right? So this is what they're having to put in the budget, right? They're having to forecast how much money they're going to raise based on this goal they have, which is to increase total annual giving. So do they want to just throw a dart at the wall and pick a number? Probably not, right? That wouldn't be sound financial planning. Um, so what they should actually do is forecast, right? They need to make an accurate prediction of what it is they can actually raise um, in that upcoming year. So 
And in terms of thinking about forecasting, I want you to think now about what could be some of the things that the athletic department looks at to try to forecast um, their ability to get these new donors, right? So think, just kind of brainstorm for a minute and think about what are some things that they could look at that might help them uh, accurately forecast how much money they're going to bring in. And feel free to pause if you want to think about this a little bit more. So I'll give you a few examples that I came up with. Um, you know, one thing you could do is look at the past year's new donors, right? How many new donors did we bring in last year? That might be a helpful indicator as to how many more we can bring in this year, right? Um, how well did our teams do last year, right? Um, did we have a couple teams win championships? Or, you know, was the football team terrible again and they had a bad record, you know? Um, thinking about sort of how the donors or potential donors are feeling about the teams is probably going to play a role in how much you can actually um, get them to donate. Um, another factor you might consider is the economy, right? What's the health of the economy right now and how is that going to impact the amount of money we can raise off of new donors this year, right? If, you're, if this is 2020 and you're trying to plan for 2021, you obviously have to take into account COVID, right? And the fact that millions of Americans are still out of work um, because of the pandemic. So that's certainly gonna impact your forecasting uh, of this particular item. Okay, so that's again, just an example to give you an idea of how you might utilize both this planning and forecasting process to actually input numbers into your budget. Okay, so we've defined what a budget is, right? And we've looked at sort of what budgets are based on, but I think if we're thinking conceptually about a budget in a sport organization, there are some other things that that budget has the ability to do, right? It, like I mentioned at the very first slide, a budget is ultimately a tool, right? Now it's a tool for financial planning, right, at its heart, but it can also be used to do some other things. So let me give you some examples here. So budgets also have the ability to motivate, right? They can motivate your employees. Um, you can link budgeting to strategic planning, right? So I'll give you an example here. Let's say the ticketing director for the Corn Belters here in town, the minor league baseball team, um, sets a goal of generating $50,000 in new ticket revenue for the upcoming season, right? So now that ticket director can use that budget item to motivate his or her employees, right? By saying, this is what we've budgeted in new revenue. So now as a team, we have to uh, actually hit that mark. So using that as a motivator for the team. Budgets also have the ability to coordinate, right? They help us coordinate our resources appropriately and become better organized to reach our goals, right? So again, an athletic department might organize a plan for reaching 150 donors if that's what they've determined is appropriate um, regarding forecasting, right? So once that budget is put in place, it actually uh, gives departments or organizations the ability to coordinate their resources appropriately or around it. And then finally, budgets have the ability to communicate, right? So you can utilize a budget, uh, especially if you're in a management position, to communicate with staff, right? It's kind of this landing point for all parties to go back to and provide information. Um, and it also helps communicate priorities, right? And if we're using a budget appropriately, we're, we're basing it on the goals and objectives we've set up as an organization, right? So hopefully the budget is then communicating what our priorities are as an organization. So again, just want you to think beyond the basic definition of a budget, right? Of course, it's a financial plan. It's something tangible we can utilize to manage our money as an organization, but it's more than that, right? It has the ability to do things like motivate, coordinate, and communicate. All right, I'm going to pause here um, for part one of the video lecture, and then part two we're going to talk about this budget development process. So we're going to you know, start at the very first step and work our way through the development process together.